everybody my name is ambika and all of you are here with me on an academy's youtube channel which is let's crack cbsc commerce and let me tell you that you are basically on the nation's best learning online uh, platform so uh, let me tell you that this is basically an app which i would request all of you to download and there's a reason behind it i'm not telling it to, to you because uh, you know like just for the sake of saying it i'm not saying it and this is genuinely the best uh, educational app and which will surely going to help you out in enhancing your uh, knowledge and if you have any doubts pertaining to any of the topics subjects you can check it out with our educators so here in basically we have got two subscription the first one is plus subscription and the second one is uh, yeah wait for it i'll let you know about it in a while so let's get uh, acknowledge ourselves with the plus subscription herein you will going to get daily live classes that means you can chat with your educators you can engage in discussions ask your doubts and answer poll all while the class is going on and this all is possible as it is already being mentioned that it is a live class and every such thing that you can chat with your educator you can engage in discussions you can clarify your doubts and you can answer poll all this can happen while the session is live next is live test and quizzes then if you are done with your preparation the next step is you need to evaluate yourself right no matter how badly we hate exams but then this is something which is an inevitable part of a student life so here in you can evaluate your preparation with our mock tests and quizzes and get detailed analysis of your performance right next is structured courses so if according to you if according to your school if you are getting this chunk of your half yearlies and this much for your finals so we will going to help you in preparing that way itself it's not like that we are teaching and teaching and teaching and we are not taking care of your content of your syllabus content so that will be considered as well next is unlimited access so one subscription gets your access to all your live and recorded courses to watch from the comfort of any of your devices so you can check it out at the ease at the comfort of your house right so what all you will going to get daily live classes structured courses live tests and quizzes and unlimited access to all the recorded courses as well next is the iconic subscription the next subscription about which i was talking right that is iconic it actually genuinely i and i mean my words huh, it has redefined the whole concept of reading of studying of teaching and learning yeah and uh, okay defined sorry yeah <laughs> sorry uh, so it has redefined the whole concept of reading and learning and uh, you know imparting and sharing knowledge why let me tell you and how first of all you will going to get the personal mentor so you can get a one on one guidance from the top experts as your personal mentor and wherein you can align your learning strategy and if you have any doubts you can check it out with them next is live doubt solution classes will be there parent connect so if your parents have any doubts relating to your uh, academic um, career if they find out uh, that they have certain doubts so they can clarify it out along with that we will going to share your weekly report with your parents so that is the best advantage of iconic and all the benefits of plus are already here with iconic right the educators are the top notch educators they are so brilliant they are so prolif prolific and they are as i genuinely call them genuinely and genuinely both that i call them the superheroes right and they are not there in their capes but rather they are in their uh, you know an academy t-shirts and they are right here to help you out if you have any doubts related to the subject so please 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 uh, download the app and this is how it will going to look like on your device all you need to do is go, go to your play store type an academy learning app this is how it will going to show it will going to pop up this way and you need to install the app from right here install 
next thing is how you will come to know what all classes are there by what all educators and at what time so for that we have got the lecture uh, with the, that is being lined up and it will be shared on our telegram channel which is quest 12th cbs e-commerce right so on this particular channel all the relevant information by which educator at what time and things like that will be shared right here right so what are the benefits of plus that the best educators will be there interactive life classes will be there live tests and quizzes and creative corner so as per cbc uh, they are very sorted and clear that they don't want to create robots okay so they want to create human beings and what are human beings those who uh, are you know who actually have to face a lot of things it's just not academic okay we have to live a real life which is right there outside the classroom right outside the school for that matter so uh, herein we are uh, we are actually having creative corner wherein you can brush up your skills on origami your robotics and uh, story writing and what not so that is all there in your plus subscription in iconic you already have all the features of plus which is best educators interactive life classes live tests and quizzes and creative corner along with that the personal mentor live doubt solutions parent connect and study planner they all are right here in iconic right so if you are literally enthralled excited and if you are very much pleased then you can download the app and you can get the subscription of a plus or of our iconic the cart value of each course for as per the month is right here and uh, the best thing is you can use my code which is ambika a m b i k a which is my name as well and with that you will going to get the discount of 10 percent so please 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 avail it this is the price this is the cart value of your iconic courses for six months it is 17k 15 months 32k 18 months 35k and 24 months 48k and again with that you can use my code which is ambika to get the discount of 10 percent right so guys please 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 use all of it if you are fine if you're comfortable with that yeah and uh, with that let's begin with the agenda of the day wherein uh, we will going to talk about the unseen passages so uh, no matter in which class you are in maybe like it begins from grade four or five till 12th it's obviously there and if you uh, plan for any of your competitive exams the unseen passages are right there isn't it so herein i and i've already in my previous videos already discussed about that how you can nail the unseen passages simple trick is that um which is like you know um don't read the passage only thing is go and check out the questions so first thing which you need to do with unseen passages is don't try to see it let them be unseen what you need to see the first thing is your questions check out your questions second thing is whatever the passage is saying i repeat whatever the passage is saying keep that information and don't add up your own views add up and that is okay don't don't add up your own views or opinions okay keep yourself out of the passage so it is genuinely this is not at all clearly the subjective outlook rather whatever it is there it is all objective and you don't need to give your opinions or your views on it if it is saying anything be it pollution be it about anybody's character any such sort right so don't involve yourself directly into it whatever content is there copy and paste it there in your answer sheet right so first thing which we have discussed is that don't 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 read the passage you don't need to see the passage only thing is go and read the question first this will actually help you in um you know in saving up your time because in english exam simon uh, in, in english exam you know time is the major issue with all of us right that we perhaps know the uh, whole question paper but only thing is that we lack uh, time because of time we are unable to finish it up so it is not at all required that you have to give 15 20 minutes to your passages 
you can reduce the time by using this trip uh, trick which is uh, which is that you can read the questions and you should not you can but rather you should read the question first right and actually how it uh, happens you know uh, what exactly how exactly this is a help you know uh, when you read the question you know what the question is asking right and once you're reading with all the questions maybe read it twice or thrice right and after that read the passage and that way you will surely be sure and confident that my question was asking for this particular word and it is right here so let me copy it down right so that is what we are going to do right now as well yeah we will going to read the questions first and then uh, we're going to read questions twice and then we will going to check out the passage clear so let's get started uh, we are not reading the passage first okay we are reading with the questions question number one is helen keller was only deaf dumb and blind deaf and dumb deaf and blind yeah helen keller was only deaf dumb and blind deaf and dumb, de uh, dumb and deaf and blind second question her teacher ann sullivan taught her to write read read and write dance i repeat her teacher and sullivan taught her to write read read and write or dance okay third question is and sullivan taught helen to read by spelling words on her face hand palm cheeks and sullivan taught helen to read by spelling words on her face hand palm cheeks okay so this is this way we are very much clear clear that it is by it is for um our um, uh, keller right which is our helen keller and it is about her teacher and sullivan right clear third fourth question alan also sorry Anne also taught helen to understand what was being said by touching the speaker's hand by touching the speaker's lips by touching the speaker's face or by touching the speaker's finger right this is your question number four and also taught helen to understand what was being said by touching the speaker's hand touching the speaker's lips touching the speaker's face touching the speaker's finger and the last question from this passage is the word author means the same as writer of books one who has authority one who is famous one who is deaf and blind right let's just quickly uh, uh, check out these questions in a reversal order question number five the word author means the same as writer of books one who has authority one who is famous one who is deaf and blind and also taught helen to understand what was being said by touching the speaker's hand touching the speaker's lips touching the speaker's face touching the speaker's fingers and sullivan taught helen to read by spelling words on her face hand palm cheeks second question her teacher and sullivan taught her to write read read and write and dance or dance sorry question first was helen keller was only deaf dumb and blind deaf and dumb deaf and blind yeah with this let's read the passage okay here it goes helen keller was a popular teacher and a famous author she became deaf and blind when she was only 19 months old her teacher ann sullivan taught her to read she did so by spelling out words on helen's palm and also taught helen to touch a speaker's lips and understand what was being said later helen learned to read books with the help of braille she went on to obtain a graduate degree her writings have inspired many differently abled people to overcome up thor uh, difficulties people who are unable to use one or more of their senses are called differently abled let's check it out again helen keller was a popular teacher and a famous author she became deaf and blind when she was only 19 months old 
her teacher and Sullivan taught her to read. She did so by spelling out words on Helen's palm and also taught Helen to touch a speaker lip, speaker's lips and understand what was being said. Later, Helen learned to read books with the help of Braille. She went off to obtain a graduate degree. Her writings have inspired many differently able people to overcome difficulties. People who are unable to use one or more of their senses are called differently able. Right? So I think this was the easiest one. Right? Now, let's recheck the question. Here goes the question number one. Helen Keller was only deaf, dumb and blind, uh, deaf and dumb or deaf and blind. Okay, so here is the answer. I think I have, uh, she became deaf and blind, right? So the answer is deaf and blind, which is your option B, deaf and blind. See how quick it is to find out the answer. Her teacher Anne Sullivan, uh, Anne Sullivan taught her to write, read, Read and write or dance. Chalo, let's check it out. Her teacher Anne Sullivan taught her to read. Very easy. Another trick children which is right there for all of you is that whenever, um, for example, question number one will be there in the first few lines or the paragraphs. Two will be just beneath that. Three will be just beneath that and fourth and fifth. So there's a serial, okay? There's a chronology in questions asked also and where they are being answered in the passage. So don't try to figure it out from the beginning itself. Until and unless, uh, you know, if you are unable to find it out, then go and read the passage again. But you have, for example, we have got the answer from, from this line. Now, the second question's answer will not be here in the first line itself. Rather, it will be just after this. Question number three's answer will be just after second and fourth and fifth, right? So, there's a series. So, don't read the whole passage again and again. Try to find out your answer from the next one, okay? Okay. And Sullivan taught Helen to read by spelling words on her face, hand, palm, cheeks. Let's check it out. She did so by spelling out words on Helen's palm. See? So easy. So easy. So easy right on palm palm is uh, basically this is called as your palm this is your palm this is your hand and this is your palm and also taught helen to understand what was being said by touching the speaker's hand touching the speaker's lips touching the speaker's face touching the speaker's fingers and let's check it out and also taught helen to touch a speaker's lips and understand what was being said. So that is speaker's lips. See? And this answer was right here. This was your first answer. Deaf and blind. This was your second. Right? Third. And here goes your fourth one. This is how you can do it. Now your fifth question will be just beneath your fourth one. Let's see. The word author means the same as writer of books. One who has authority, one who is famous, one who is a uh, deaf and blind. So that is too easy. I don't think we need to go back to the passage. And obviously, these are not the correct options, which is writer of books. Okay. Um, although it is not there, this, this was basically uh, your question uh, based on your own knowledge. Okay. So that's how we are done with passage one. See, it's easy, right? I hope you all have understood. I hope all of you have got the trick, which was don't read the passage first. Read the questions. If you're done with that, once you have started finding the answers, if the first question is, if the first answer is there in the first or second line, then there will be series followed. Okay, so stick to it. Don't try to waste your time rereading, rereading, rereading. No, we are not going to do that. Okay. Here goes the second passage, which we are not going to read now. Yeah. So here goes the first question. Watching too much of TV affects our skin, nails, eyes or hair. Okay. Watching too much of TV affects our skin, nails, eyes or hair. Average TV viewing is about less than one hour, more than two hours. 3 to 4 hours, 
four to five hours. Okay, average TV viewing is about less than one hour, more than two hours, three to four hours, four to five hours. The general complaint of headache is due to watching TV at a close range, high pitched sound of dance and music, weak eyesight due to viewing TV, muscle pain. The general complaint of headache is due to watching TV at a close range, high pitched sound of dance and music, weak eyesight due to viewing TV, muscle pain. Fifth question. Psychological problems are caused due to sluggish digestive system, wrong posture while watching TV, watching scenes of horror and violence, eating and drinking while watching TV. Psychological problems are caused due to sluggish digestive system, wrong posture while watching TV, watching scenes of horror and violence, eating and drinking while watching TV. And the fifth question. Continuous TV viewing in one posture causes obesity, psychological problems, joint pain, back pain and muscle pain or headache, right? So let's read these questions in the reverse order, which is continuous TV viewing in one posture causes obesity, psychological problems, joint pain, back pain and muscle pain, headache. Psychological problems are caused due to sluggish digestive system, wrong posture while watching TV, watching scenes of horror and violence, eating and drinking while watching TV. The general complaint of headache is due to watching TV at a close range, high pitched sound of dance and music, weak eyesight due to viewing TV, muscle pain. Average TV viewing is about less than one hour, more than two hours, three to four hours, four to five hours. Watching too much of TV affects our skin, nails, eyes or hair. Okay, so now it's time to read the passage. Side effects of TV. This is something which we already know because all the questions were somewhere revolving around the word TV. Okay, here it goes. Scientists and doctors keep warning us of dangerous effects of TV on various systems and organs of our body. Watching TV continuously for a long time is extremely harmful for the eyes. I think I have read it somewhere. Yeah, kuch question tha mujhe yaad aa rahe. Maybe I'm wrong, but okay, I'm simply underlining it. Everyone on an average watches TV to three to four hours daily. Consequently, eyesight gets weak. Children are the most affected because from their very childhood, their eyesight goes weaker and weaker by watching TV and at a close range, it is all the most harmful. I'm reading the first passage again, uh, which is like the first part of the passage and then we're going to read the second. Scientists and doctors keep warning us of the dangerous effects of TV on various systems and organs of our body. Watching TV continuously for a long time is extremely harmful for the eyes. Everyone on an average watches TV for three to four hours daily. Consequently, what is the meaning of the word consequently, which means as a result, as a result. Okay. Eyesight gets weak. Children are the most affected because from their weak, very childhood, their eyesight goes weaker and weaker by watching TV and at a close range, it is all the more harmful. Okay. Next, the, debil the debilitating effect of TV watching on eyesight has resulted into general complaint of headache. I think I have got some memory of these words. So that is why I'm simply underlining them. You can do the same. The high pitched sound of dance, music, fights and cries in various programmed results into deafness. Continuous watching of TV is in one posture. Ye kuch mujhe posture word bhi yaad aare, if I'm not wrong. Causes joint pain, back ache and muscle pain. I think I've read these terms. Hey, did you feel the same? Yeah, I think so. We have read it. 
yeah eating and drinking while watching tv causes obesity and also makes our digestive system sluggish i read this term this is so different no i think i have read it scenes of horror and violence are causing psychological problems ye word bhi tha in our youth in short watching tv for long hours is harmful for our health and mental growth let's reread the second passage again the debilitating effect um, of uh, tv watching on eye sight has resulted into a general complaint of headache the high pitched sound of dance music fights and cries in various program results into deafness continuous watching of tv in one posture causes joint pain back pain and muscle pain eating and drinking while watching tv causes obesity and also makes our digestive system sluggish scenes of horror and violence are causing psychological problems in our youth in short watching tv for long hours is harmful for our health and mental growth we are very clear chali without wasting much of our time let's check out the questions watching too much of tv affects our skin no nails no eyes yes hair no so yes it is eyes easy cool average tv viewing is about less than 1 hour more than 2 hours 3 to 4 hours or 4 to 5 hours i think it's 3 to 4 hours but let's just be sure okay uh, it is being mentioned uh, 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 where is it scientists okay 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 uh, yeah 3 to 4 hours got it 3 to 4 hours daily got it 3 to 4 hours yeah 3 to 4 hours the general complaint of headache is due to watching tv at a close range high pitch sound of dance and music weak eyesight due to viewing tv or muscle pain let's check it out and uh, i think it's weak eyesight but okay let's just be sure oops okay yes 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 got it got it goes weaker and weaker by watching tv so the correct answer is weak eyesight due to viewing tv see the second answer was right here no right here this was our answer two and this is our answer three so next answer four will be here somewhere here okay let's check it out the question psychological problems are caused due to sluggish digestive system right a uh, wrong posture while watching tv watching scenes of horror and violence eating and drinking while watching tv i think i think psychological problem no digestive system wala to ye wala point hai obesity wala so uh, it was right here okay the de ek minute Yes, the deliberating effect of TV watching on eyesight has resulted into general complaint of headache, high pitch sound of dance, music, fights and cries in various programs resulted into deafness. Continuing watching TV, ye bhi nahi hai. Eating and ye bhi nahi hai. Okay, scenes of horror and violence are causing psychological problems in our youth. So that is this. Scenes of watching, watching scenes of horror and violence. That is the reason behind our psychological problems. Okay. Fifth question. Continuous TV viewing in one posture causes obesity, psychological problems, joint pain, back pain and muscle pain or headache. I think it's option C. But let's get be very sure about this. So it is, uh, where did we read it? Where did we read it? Yes, it is right here. In one posture causes joint pain, backache and muscle pain. It's right here. Okay, that was the question. Okay, so that's how you can figure it out your own answers. I think it's easy. Yeah, it's going easy and the passages are also informative, right? We have got uh, two more passages to do. So I think um, we should do it right here, right now itself. Okay, so now let's read the question first. It says, a reader's curiosity cannot be aroused without comedy, suspense, tragedy or drama. 
a reader's curiosity cannot be aroused without comedy suspense tragedy or drama agatha christie's stories are realistic because they involve dash fairies and dragons superheroes everyday characters or aliens okay agatha christie's stories are realistic because they involve dash fairies and dragons that means they involve superheroes super everyday characters or aliens Agatha Christie's stories are interesting as they have an expected outcome and with an unexpected twist have a lot of lot of fun element in them are easy to understand um okay something related to Agatha Christie and something related to her stories okay i know who Agatha Christie is but if you don't know so uh, yeah so she used to write a lot of detective stories for children one needs a lot of dash to write mystery stories courage crazy ideas novel thoughts or imagination one needs a lot of dash to write mystery stories uh, courage crazy ideas noble thoughts or imagination and the fifth question is to stump the reader a mystery story writer has to provide to stump perhaps means um, to uh, you know have to make it um, shock like to make him or her shock or to enjoy rather yeah relish no clues just the right amount of clues a whole lot of clues or very less clues okay so something about agatha christie about her writing about her mystery writing and she herself as a writer so these are the points which needs to be covered right here okay now let's check it out first let's recall the questions again to stump the reader a mystery story writer has to provide no clues just the right amount of clues a whole lot of clues very less clues one needs a lot of dash to write mystery stories courage crazy ideas noble thoughts or imagination agatha christie stories are interesting as they have an expected outcome and with an unexpected twist have a lot of fun element in them are easy to understand Agatha Christie's stories are realistic because they involve dash fairies and dragons superheroes everyday characters or aliens a reader's curiosity cannot be aroused without comedy suspense tragedy or drama okay so let's get started with the mystery stories by agatha christie and please i am so fond of agatha christie's book if you uh, because you guys are too young you know and you should read her mystery stories they are so amazing and uh, the suspense they create the culprit the victim they are so amazing each of the characters are so life like life like means they are um, you you will going to feel some connect with it and along with that you will also feel that hey if i would have been at this situation i would have done that i would have treated it, it this way i think he is the uh, reason behind all the mess so you know how you are also involved in that okay so let's check it out and please if you uh, and christmas is right here you have got the free time right so please read out uh, the stories here goes the mystery stories writing a mystery is not an easy task with, because without suspense i think it was required somewhere suspense the reader's curiosity will not be aroused aroused means generated evoked it is evoked or generated right that is arousing okay agatha christie is a well known writer of mystery stories mystery is uh, wherein suspense is included yeah mystery simply means wherein suspense is included the plot the plot is basically your story in which uh, sorry the story the plot in each of her stories involves everyday character so here in plot is basically the base the form the foundation of the story involves everyday character i think we required this because it is one of the options also by any chance if you forget about the questions but if you think that this option was right somewhere then underline that that we can relate to this makes her stories more realistic because whatever she writes about can happen to any one of us so whatever she writes it can happen to any one of us they are so life like they're so realistic let's read the first passage again first uh, paragraph again 
Writing a mystery is not an easy task because without suspense, the reader's curiosity will not be aroused. Agatha Christie is a well-known writer of mystery stories. The plot in each of her stories involves everyday character that we can relate to. This makes her stories more realistic because whatever she writes about can happen to any one of us. Okay. What makes her stories more interesting is that they always came with a twist at the end of the novel. Okay. I think it's an important line. Lag rahe. We can underline this. Just when we think that the mystery has been solved and the culprit has been caught, we find out that someone who had seemed innocent throughout the story was actually the criminal. Okay, interesting fact about her writing. Writing mysteries, therefore, requires a lot of imagination. I think we need this word somewhere. The writer has to think of something unexpected to stump the reader. This word was somewhere, stump. This can be done by providing just the right amount of clues that give the, right, the reader an idea of what is happening, yet making him wonder what will happen in the end. Okay, let's read this uh, paragraph again. What makes her stories more interesting is that they always came with a twist at the end of the novel. Just when we think that the mystery has been solved and the culprit has been caught, we find out that Someone who had seemed innocent throughout the story was actually the criminal. Writing mysteries, therefore, requires a lot of imagination. The writer has to think of something unexpected to stump the reader. This can be done by providing just the right amount of clues. I think it was required somewhere. Maybe I'm wrong, but there's no harm just underlining the important points that give the reader an idea of what is happening, yet making him wonder what will happen in the end. Interesting. Okay. A reader's curiosity cannot be aroused without comedy, suspense, tragedy or drama. Any day it is suspense. Itna sara passage when you at least yeh toh that yeah, without suspense. See, it's right here. Answer one. Agatha Christie's stories are realistic because they involve dash fairies and dragons, superheroes, everyday characters and aliens. I think it's everyday characters because I remember, but let, let's be very sure, okay? Uh, we didn't? Yeah, okay. The reader's curiosity, yeah, it's right here, everyday character. The plot in each of our stories involves everyday character. So that's definitely everyday characters. Agatha Christie's stories are interesting as they have an expected outcome. And with an unexpected twist, have a lot of fun element in them are easy to understand because they end with an unexpected twist. Okay, but let's just be sure. Uh, hmm. Twist at the end of the novel, that is one of the reasons, okay. Yeah, unexpected to stump the reader. So that is wherein we can find out our answer. Okay. Okay, here goes the fourth question. One needs a lot of dash to write mystery stories. One needs a lot of, I have uh, underlined this term, courage, crazy ideas, noble thoughts, imagination. It's imagination, I've underlined it somewhere. Imagination is... Um, yeah, requires a lot of imagination. Writing mystery stories therefore requires a lot of imagination. Okay, fifth question from Agatha Streak, the uh, uh, mysteries or stories. The stump, to stump the reader. I told you this word was there, no? A mystery story writer has to provide no clues just the right amount of clues, 
a whole lot of clues very less clues i think just the right amount of clues is the correct answer but let's just be sure now see we have underlined it already this can be done by providing just the right amount of clues clear so that is how you can find out your answers see lot of imagination was right here right everyday character was the question number two this was question number one so how they are in serial order so we don't need to uh, you know go back to the same paragraph again and again these questions are simple right they are easy to solve isn't it but we will move to the difficult one in a while okay this is this this is very easy this passage fill in the blanks with the correct option the young one of a lion is called a although we know it's a cub we know this okay i know you all are in grade 11 and you are so sure that it is being called as uh, cub but uh, we just can't finalize it because uh, this is something which we need as i've already told you in the beginning of the session that you can't simply write the answer just because you feel it's right it has nothing to do with the subjective outlook which is ki aapko apni opinions nahi add karne hai because it's a passage okay so you just can't do that clear the lion wanted a good dash for his cub partner friend or teacher what exactly he wanted he did not want the fox to teach him because he is cunning silly or clever cunning and clever are somewhere similar words but whatever word is being mentioned in the story we're going to use that finally the lion selected the dash as his cub's teacher elephant owl or monkey finally the lion selected the dash as his cub's teacher elephant owl or monkey and the last question from the same passage is the opposite of wise is foolish wisdom or intelligent i know you already know these questions that is why i have and this is so easy but then again do keep your subjective outlook away from the passage i'm repeating the questions the opposite of wise is foolish wisdom intelligent finally the lion selected the dash as his cub's teacher elephant owl monkey he did not want the fox to teach him because he is cunning silly or clever the lion wanted a good dash for his cub partner friend or teacher uh, the young one of a lion is called a dash cub lioness or prince okay here it goes once the lion the king of the jungle the lion said to his to its friend as you know i am the king of the jungle and my cub is going to be the next king simba <laughs> and mufasa's son yeah i want to provide him with the education that is fit for a king please suggest a good teacher for my cub the owl suggested the fox i think we have read it somewhere owl and fox these two names so let's just underline it as it is supposed to be very clever the lion replied no way the fox is very cunning and he always lies he cannot teach my son the owl suggested the elephant but the lion said the elephant is uh, just strong but not intelligent okay interesting he cannot be my cub's teacher let's read this uh, paragraph again once the lion the king of the jungle the lion said to his friend as you know i am the king of the jungle and my cub is going to be the next king i want to provide him with the education that is fit for a king please suggest a good teacher for my cub the owl suggested the fox as it is supposed to be very clever the lion replied no way the fox is very cunning and he always lies he cannot teach my son the owl suggested the elephant but the lion said the elephant is just strong but not intelligent he cannot be my cub's teacher the owl suggested many animals names but the lion did not approve anybody finally the owl said okay why don't i teach your son the lion readily agreed as the owl is supposed to be very wise he appointed the wise owl as the cub's teacher 
I'm repeating the same paragraph again. Although I don't, I want, I don't want you uh, because this is so easy. But still, because we are following a pattern, so let's just do it. The owl suggested many animals names, but the lion did not approve anybody. Finally, the owl said, "Okay, why don't I teach your son?" The lion readily agreed, as the owl is supposed to be very wise. He appointed the wise owl as the cub's teacher. Okay, the first question. Uh, the young one of a lion is called a cub. I don't think so. We need to go back to the passage. I'm just uh, simply marking this as cub. The lion wanted a good dash for his cub, which is partner, friend, or teacher. Again, we don't need to go back. It's too easy. Let's not waste our time. It is teacher. He did not want the fox to teach him because he is cunning, silly, or clever. He did not want the fox to teach him because he is cunning or clever. Both the terms were there, so you can pick it out any. Let's just pick cunning. Finally, the lion selected the dash as his cub's teacher, which is owl. Okay. And fifth question is the opposite of wise is foolish, wisdom, or intelligent. Yeah, opposite of wise, which is foolish. Write your word wisdom and intelligent are the synonyms of the word wise. Right. So only this word is uh, left, which is foolish. So any which way you can pick it out. Yeah, too easy, right? Now let's check out some passages specifically for you, wherein you will go into. This is basically of your standard. These are simply the trial and tested one, um, which we have done in our special classes also. But the next one is specifically for as per your class. Okay, here it goes. But let's read the question first. Why was the Statue of Liberty given as a gift to America by France? What is the name of the sculptor of the monument, the Statue of Liberty? What did the sculptor imagine the Statue of Liberty to be? How many years did it take to unveil the Statue of Liberty? Trace the word from the passage, which means the same as um, imagined okay these are five questions which we have got and now you need to write down the answers there are no options given so i'm going to provide you the answers and you can copy them down if you feel like the questions are why was the statue of liberty given as a gift to america by france what is the name of the sculptor of the monument the statue of liberty why what did the sculptor imagine the statue of liberty to be yeah how many years did it take to unveil the Statue of Liberty? Trace the word from the passage which means the same as imagined. So it is something definitely about Statue of Liberty. Okay. Now, when we enter New York Harbor, the first thing we see is the Statue of Liberty. What impresses us the most is its size and magnificence. This is not going to be pronounced as magnificence. It is magnificence. Have you ever wondered how it came to be there? The Statue of Liberty was a gift. Okay, this is something which we required. The Statue of Liberty was a gift from the people of France to the mark the 100 year anniversary of American independence. In 1869, sculptor Frederick Auguste Bartholdi what is the name of the sculptor? Frederick Auguste Bartholdi began to plan his concept for the monument. Bartholdi chose the look of Greek, of classic Greek and Roman figures. He envisioned liberty. I think we need this term somewhere. He envisioned uh, liberty as a strong and proud figure, one who personified not only the majestic Greek goodness of the past, but also the working men and women of the and the women of the present. Finally, in 1884, the work was finished and Liberty was packed in 214 crates and sent to New York City. Only one problem stood in the way. While the French had raised a lot of funds to build the statue, New York had not secured the funds to build its foundation. 
it was not until a new york newspaper implored people for donations that money became available finally on 28th october 1886 americans celebrated the unveiling of the statue of liberty wow nice uh, uh, we came to know a lot about statue of liberty i think which about which we never knew right okay let's read the passage again what we when we enter new york harbor the first thing we see is the statue of liberty what impresses us the most is its size and magnificence have you ever wondered how it came to be there the statue of liberty was a gift from the people of france to mark the 100th anniversary of american independence in 1869 sculptor frederick auguste bartholdi began to plan his concept for the monument bartholdi chose the look of classic greek and roman figures he envisioned liberty as a strong and proud figure one who person personified not only the majestic greek goddesses of the past but also the working men and women of the present finally in 1884 the work was finished and liberty was packed in 214 crates and sent to new york city only one problem stood in the way while the french had raised a lot of funds to build the statue new york has not secured the funds to build its foundation it was not until a new york newspaper implored people for donations that money became available finally on 28th october 1886 Americans celebrated the unveiling of the Statue of Liberty. Okay, now first question is why was the Statue of Liberty given as a gift to America by France? The Statue of Liberty was a gift from people of France to mark the one hundred years anniversary of American independence. Let me write the answer here. I am writing uh, it at the top and marking it as A. okay if you want to copy it down you can the statue of liberty was given as a gift okay to america by france to mark the 100 year one hundred year of anniversary independence i will be in caps okay independence okay why was the statue of liberty given as a gift to america by france because it was the statue of liberty was given um as a gift to america by france to mark the 100 year of anniversary by american independence okay the next question is let me change the ink of the pen so that it would be very clear for all of you to figure out the answer hmm what is the name of the sculptor of the monument the statue of liberty i think it's too easy i'm writing the spelling so please get it confirmed and whenever you are writing from the passage also be sure that you have written the correct one frederick auguste bartholdi okay what did the sculptor imagine the statue of liberty to be yeah he st- imagined the statue of liberty as the majestic
as the majestic Greek goddess of the past and also as the working men and women women of the present all these lines are right there in your passage so if you can figure it out from there itself how many years did it take to uh, to unveil the statue of liberty so it took a lot of years i think it took two years and the answer is right there so how we can frame it out it see it's dead right so while answering it will become took it took two years to unveil the Statue of Liberty. Now trace a word from the passage which means the same as imagine. So what we need to do, we need to use this word imagine and we need to uh, replace it wherever it can be suitable. Okay. Magnificence, no. Um, let's check it out. France to in the hundred of years of American independence in 1869. Sculptor Frederick this began to plan this concept of the monument. Bartholi chose the look of classic Greek and Roman figures. He em he envisioned, he imagined liberty because that's what he did, right? Here the word fix is But if we are not confirmed, let's just put it there. As a strong and proud figure, one who personified not only personified means giving humanly attributes. Okay. The majestic Greek goddess of the past, but also the working men and women of the present. Finally, in 1884, the work was finished and Liberty was packed into two one four crates and sent to New York. Uh, only one problem in the while. Okay, this is not the one. This is not the one. This is not the one. It was not until a New York newspaper implored people, not imagined people. Nay said or so let's just forget it. This is not the word. For donations became available and this. Okay, and unveiling means remove. Hatana. Parda hatana, right? So imagine means we have got the term which is NV zint. So that's how you can figure it out. Okay. I hope you got the whole trick of it. Yeah. So it's time to check out the next question. And that will be the last question. Why? Sorry. What did the carpenter tell his employer? What favor did his employer ask from the carpenter? What surprise did the employer have for the carpenter? Why was the surprise a shame for the carpenter? Which word is the first paragraph means uh, the same as art of skill of a workman. Oh, it's something interesting. It's a story. What did the carpenter tell his employer? What favor did his employer ask from his carpenter? What surprise did the employer have for the carpenter? Why was the surprise a shame for the carpenter? Which word in the first paragraph means the same as art of skill of a workman? Okay, something interesting. I hope it's very clear to all of you. So let's start and let's begin and read it. An elderly carpenter was ready to retire. He told his employer of his plans to, plans to leave the house building business and live a more leisurely life with his family. He would miss the paycheck, but he needed to retire. The employer was sorry to see his good worker go and asked if he would build just one more house as a personal favor. The carpenter said yes, but in time it was easy to see that his heart was not in his work. He resorted to shoddy workmanship and used inferior material. It was an unfortunate way to end his career. When the carpenter finished his work, his employer handed over the key of the house to the carpenter. This is your house, my gift to you. What a shock, what a shame. If he had only, if he had only known he was building his own house, he would have done it all so differently. Now he had to live in a poorly built house. So it is with us. We lived, we, he, we built our lives a day. Three at a time, often putting less than our best into building. Then with a shock, we realize we have to live in the house uh, we have built. We, If we could do it over, we would do it much differently. 
but you cannot go back. You are the carpenter and every day you hammer a nail, place a boat or erect a wall. Someone once said, your attitude and your choices you make today help build the house you will live in tomorrow. Therefore, build wisely. Oh my God, that's a beautiful story. All right, let's read it again. It says, an elderly carpenter was ready to retire. He told his employer of his plans to leave the house, building businesses, building business and live a more um, leisurely life with his family. He would miss the paycheck, but he needed to retire. The employer was sorry to see his good worker go and ask if he would build just one more house as a personal favor. The carpenter said yes, but it is time, but in time it was easy to see that his heart was not in his work. He resorted to shoddy workmanship and used inferior material. It was an unfortunate way to end his career. When the carpenter finished his work, his employer handed over the key of the house to the carpenter. This is your house, my gift to you. What a shock! What a shame! If he had only known he was building his own house, he would have done it all differently. Now he had to live in a poorly built house. So it is with us. We build our houses a day. Three at a time, often putting less than our best into the building. Then with the shock, we realize we have to live in the house we have built. If we could do it over, we could do it much differently. But you cannot go back. You are the carpenter. And every day you hammer a nail, place a boat or erect a wall. Someone once said, your attitude and the, your choices you make today help build the house you will live in tomorrow. Therefore, build wisely. Nice. Okay. Here goes the first question. It is, what did the carpenter tell his employer so that he wanted to leave the job? So I'm writing the answer here. The carpenter told his employer The carpenter told his employer of his plans to retire from his house house building business and lift a leisurely life with his family okay Next question. What favor did his employer ask from the carpenter to build one last house? Right. So it can be the employer asked. See, it's did, right? So it will automatically become asked from the carpenter if he could if he could build Just one house, just one more house okay, I'm so sorry as a favor, okay, as a favor. What surprise did the employer have for the carpenter um I'm writing it here. The employer, what did he do? He handed over the keys, right? The employer handed over the keys handed over the keys of the new house to the carpenter. 
Why was the surprise a shame or for the carpenter? The employer handed over the keys of the uh, as the carpenter. I'm writing it here. As the carpenter resorted the resorted to shoddy workmanship. Yeah, and used what type of material? Inferior material. Okay, what word in the first paragraph means the the same as art of skill of a workman? Uh, let's just first figure it out. First paragraph somewhere here. Yeah, shoddy workmanship. Got it. It's workmen. So I hope you uh, liked our uh, class today. We have done together one of the questions also. So this might uh, help you and it will surely going to help you out once you will going to do these questions on your own again right and this is simply a trick which you can all of you use while uh, framing out your own uh, you know like when you're reading the passages and how we waste our time so that will be uh, somehow managed hopefully once you're done watching this video right if you like the video please uh, if you've enjoyed the video though thoroughly do like the video and uh, share it amongst your friends as well and one more thing which i wanted to tell you is that do download the unacademy app and uh, either go with plus or with iconic subscription call is yours choice is yours so go for it and as i've already told you you can use my code which is ambika you know why because i'm telling it to you you know you have because if you want to get 10 percent of discount so for that you can use my code other thing for unacademy is that if you are actually a knowledge enthusiast if you have quest to learn to you know to know things and um, you need uh, somebody's guidance or assistance so please 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 download the app yeah and it's so easy you all you need to do is go to your play store type an academy learning app you know how i can like how exactly your icon it's exactly like this so you can you know check it out and do download do install the app and um, i hope you have a great time in learning with us yeah with that i'm going to take your leave have a great time ahead and uh, yeah all right take care bye bye